Welcome back to the shop. In this video we're going to finish up the multi-position carriage stop that we started in the last video. If you haven't seen the first part I'll put a card up in the corner for that. What I've done so far is made up these two blocks. They are 5 8 by 5 16 and inch and an eighth long. And these are going to be the pivots that hold the stops and will pivot up and out of the way. So what we're going to do, we've got the mill stop set up. So we're just going to put the first one in. We'll use an edge finder, center up on it this way, and then move 5 16 off of this end. And we will drill it and then ream it for what will be a brass 3 16 pin that'll go through there. Now what we're going to do while we still have the drill check in here is do a similar operation on the end of both of these parts. We're going to clamp it in here upright using our 90 degree angle. And then we'll center up on the end of this and drill it and tap it quarter 28. We're back over in the mill and I've got the body of the carriage stop stood upright and we're centered up in the X direction and I touched off on the front with the edge finder here. Uh, instead of going back a full 5 16 312 thousandths, I only went back about 300 or so. I don't want this thing to get forced and pinned into the bottom of that slot. So I left it about 10 or 12 thousandths shy of a full 5 16 depth off of this surface. So now we're going to drill and ream this 3 16 all the way through the body of the carriage stop. I'm going to clean all the chips out of here and then just hit the inside edges with a file to clean up the burrs from that hole. We're switched back to an end mill. We've got both of the pivot pieces here with a 3 16 pin going through them. And that pin is resting on the top of the vice jaws. So that's what's setting the height of these guys. Both have been squared up. And we're going to come down and touch off on a piece of tape 
it's about four thousandths thick and we'll lock the quill height right there. Then we can loosen up the vise jaws and rotate these guys around in order to cut a radius around this hole in the middle. Now I'm just going to go over to the belt sander to smooth this out. The smaller you increment this each time you make a pass, the more complete the radius will be. And you can always pull it out and clean it because the pin here is always going to set the height back to where you were. If these come out of alignment with each other, it doesn't really matter either, so long as that you don't go past horizontal with it or you'll end up cutting into this portion over here. The last steps for the main body of the carriage stop is one last drilled and tapped hole right in here. That'll be for the third stop. It's going to come right down between the tapped hole for the clamp and these two alignment pins. I'm going to do that off camera. And then the last thing is just to make this thing look a little less boxy. So I'm going to take some material off of this corner and then use a eighth inch radius end mill to round over most of the rest of these corners and also the clamp portion there. At this point you could pretty much call the project complete. Use a few quarter 28 bolts as your stops and just use it like that. I'm going to go ahead and make stops out of brass. So I've got a portion here turned down to 7 16 and we're going to knurl an area here in the middle and that will end up being the head of the stop. In an upcoming video, I'm going to make a clamp type knurling tool that will hopefully work a lot better than this cheap Chinese one. So we've got a good start to our knurls. I'm just going to make a couple more passes back and forth and increase the pressure on the cross slide. I'm happy with the knurl. The middle of it looks the best. So next I'm going to switch back to a regular turning tool and turn down the end here up until somewhere in this area down to a few thousandths under a quarter inch and then we'll thread that.
could thread this with the die holder and a quarter 28 die and be done in 10 seconds, but we'd end up with a real loose, sloppy fit into the pivots. And we could use a jam nut on there also, but what I'm going to do is single point thread these and try to get a nice firm fit into the pivots so that there's no wiggle or play with the threads. We've got the threading tool here lined up with our fish tape. Gearbox is in 28 threads per inch. And we're just going to come in and touch off and then we'll do a scratch pass and check our threads. Looks like we're right on 28. So I'm just going to keep threading this and we'll check it often once we get close to make sure we have a nice snug fit into these threads. Here's another view of the controls so you can see what I'm doing while I'm threading. I've got the cross slide back into its zero and a couple thousandths advanced on the compound. And now I'm just watching the threading dial and as soon as this one goes around I'm going to engage and now I'm watching and as soon as we get to the end I'm going to immediately back out of the cross slide and then disengage the feed. Back into the zero. On the cross slide. You want to, if you're threading up to an end like this without an undercut, you want to back out of the cut. So you want to back out of the cross slide first before you disengage the feed. Otherwise, you're going to end up cutting yourself and undercut all the way around. We'll test out our final fit here. That's exactly what we wanted, a nice snug fit. No slop at all. So I'm happy with that. What we're going to do is come in here and basically just plunge in to part off the end here that has the center, center drill in it. No real reason, just I don't want the center drill mark in the end of there. And then we'll do the same over here. Plunge in somewhere up in here and then finish off the cut with the hacksaw. And we'll come back and trim off the top of these once we're all done.
I repeated that and made two more, each with a little bit different thread length to them. That way I have some variability and some option when using the carriage stop. And if I need to, I can always shorten one of these or make another one with longer threads on it. So since the tops were all just rough cut, I'm going to start with the one here with the shortest length for the head. And I've made an arbor, just a scrap of aluminum drilled and tapped, quarter 28. So I'm going to thread that in and then we'll face off all three of these to the same length and chamfer and then sort of round over the head. After a little bit of time on the belt sander, here's the finished carriage stop. Drove a brass pin all the way through here, sanded it off flush, and that's what holds the two pivots in place. And here's the clamp that we made in just a 3 8 16 bolt. That's held on there nice and solid. And you can adjust these three stops to any position that you need for whatever operation you're using this for on the lathe. I hope you liked the video. Be sure and subscribe for more shop projects coming soon, and thanks a lot for watching.